in today's video, I'm going to show you how to file an idiot proof provisional patent application for $70 and you're going to do it all by yourself and it's not going to take a lot of time nor effort. I'm going to flesh this thing out and answer any questions you might have and eliminate any roadblocks or any confusion. You do not need to be paying a service for this ability to file. These services charge in excess of $150 on up and depending on the patent attorneys, that fee is skyrocketing compared to what you can do it for. In the following video, I'm going to detail the forms and again, we'll go on my USPTO and I'll refresh on how to upload them. Then in the following video from that, I'm going to show you how to apply for and how to receive a customer number so that you can interact with the USPTO as office actions come up, especially when you're filing a trademark or a non-provisional patent application. And then the final video in this series is I'm going to take you on a detailed tour of what my provisional patent application actually looked like with the specification, the drawings, and the photographs. And I'll show you how to draft a winning provisional patent application and get it fine-tuned enough so that when you follow it up with a non-provisional, you won't have a lot of work to do except fine-tuning your drawings, and applying your claims. Okay, so I'll meet you on the website. So as you can see, we made it over to the internet. The most important thing in the beginning is when you're dealing with this and you want to find the proper front page for the USPTO, just type in USPTO.gov and this comes up. So we're going to click on this and this is the picture du jour. They change your pictures all the time, but this ought to stick in your head. A red hard hat on a lady's head. So these drop down menus are helpful to you but they're not necessary whatsoever at this point. What you want to do is you want to go up to the extreme right hand side in the black bar and click on my USPTO. And it opens up this page and you want to create an account. Now I can't create an account at this time because I already have one and it won't allow me to because all my information is with the PTO at this site. So this application form is no more complicated than anything you currently do when you're on the internet, when you're buying from a new vendor or paying a bill or setting up a, an electronic relationship. So that's simple enough. That'll take you all the three minutes to fill out and get the account. Let me show you what the account looks like. Well, I'm going to take you on to my account. So it's got my, my email address there. Of course, it's password protected. And now there are two-step verification involved. So I'm waiting for the text. I just hit a button that said 
don't bother me with the two-step verification for the next 24 hours. Now, this is what your home page looks like, okay? You don't need that. You don't need any of this stuff, although it's helpful when, when the time comes, but that time is not here. So you go up to this black bar and you hit patents. And the drop-down menu, it says, file patent. Now here's where we begin the process and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. And this will only take a few minutes. As you can see, it says registered e-filers. I am registered. I have a customer number assigned to me. I have two-step verification and that links this account, me, and any of the applications that I might process through this account. And that is done by the receipt of a customer number. And in the following video, I'm going to show you the three forms that you have to fill out to get a customer number. However, you don't need to do that now. And you can file a provisional patent application without a customer number. And actually, from what I've been told from the people in the electronics business unit, you basically have to form a USPTO government account. And then you can follow it up with the three forms and get your customer number. So don't get hung up with that. And the customer number, as I said in the intro, allows you to interface with the private pair system, which is the electronic system where you can monitor your office actions, but there are not going to be any office actions for a provisional patent application because you're going to get a notice immediately from the internet that they received it. And then you're going to get an email and a hard copy sent to you with your date certain or your priority date in the mail in about three weeks time from doing this. So don't be concerned about the customer number. It'll only serve to confuse you. So watch this radio button is already highlighted. I certify that I'm the certificate holder. Notice how this radio button won't highlight because this is my registered account. So we drop down a little further, the main functions, new application proceeding. And that's going to allow us to do a couple of things. A utility patent, meaning a non-provisional, a design patent, and all this other things. There's only three types of patents, which I already mentioned. A utility a design, and a plant. And plants aren't on here for whatever reason. And when I talk about plants, I'm not talking about industrial plants. I'm talking about the green plants that populate planet Earth. So as you can also see in this box, if you go hunting for it, you'll never find it. You're looking for how to file a provisional patent application. And what they do is they group provisional patent applications under utility patent applications. You don't need anything in this box. Don't pay attention to it. All as you want is this one. And that's where you're going to find a provisional patent application. Don't worry about existing applications because you don't have one. Don't worry about my workspace because you haven't saved any work. So we hit continue. So the type of invention that you're going to file on, you would type in here and we're going to, we're going to go off of what I did prior. So that's your title. There is no attorney docket number because you're not working with an attorney and an attorney's not working on this. So we're going to type in
Now, if I wanted to, I could type in Stephen Smith, but I might as well just use my name since I'm on my account. Now, this is where the customer number comes in handy. If I hit this, my customer number and my name will appear. But here's what's going to happen for you. Everything is going to be exactly the same for you. But instead of hitting customer number, you're going to hit correspondence address. Okay? And that's what you would do if you are a non-registered uh, filer. And that's what you're going to be. So let's do this. I'm using a fictitious address. I can even do this if I want. And they don't need anything else from me, but when you're filling this out and you are a non-registered user, please use your full name with your middle name. You should always use your middle name when you're doing legal things and especially with the USPTO. Always use your full proper given name. Your proper street address The city, I might as well do this all. It's not necessary. They don't need it, but I'm telling you, you're going to want to do it. Okay, full name, proper address, city, state, the United States is by default, postal code, your phone number, and your email. Now watch what happens now. This comes up, Tangle Free Flag. The first named inventor is Stephen Edward Moore because that's what I did. And it'll take pretty much anything. So let's go back to application data. Stephen Edward Smith. Watch what happens. I changed it from Stephen Edward Moore to Stephen Edward Smith. Tangle Free Flag, Stephen Edward Smith, Stephen Edward Smith, the address, the phone number, the email. But look at my name appears on the bottom. And it appears because this is my private portal. I have a registered customer number with the USPTO. So my name will always appear on here. And so will yours once you register and receive a customer number. But like I said, you're going to look at this and you're going to get this and don't worry, you can file for a provisional patent application without a registered customer number. Now watch how easy this is. Choose file. So right away, this opens up to my files. And the first one I'm going to upload is the micro entity status. And I'm just going to give you a very brief tutorial on what that is. So 
That's the SB15 form, the micro entity status. You come over here, you click all categories, and you hit this, the entity status correspondence. This is the only time you're going to hit this. And then when you do, it's going to activate what comes up in this box. And you're going to be a certified micro entity status because of your income, not because you're a nonprofit or an educational institution. You're going to hit this. And why are you going to hit this? Because the micro entity status limits out on your income at $202,563 a year for the year 2022. So if you make below 202 grand, you're entitled to a micro entity status. If you make above that, you're going to pay instead of $75 for this application, you're going to pay 150 and then a large entity pays 300. So I'm going to add the file. Now, if the file was not in the proper nomenclature for the PTO's uh, system, this wouldn't pop up. And I'll show you what happens. So we're going to choose another file. And we're going to come up here and we're going to pick the cover sheet. Now, please pay attention to this. This is absolutely critical. If you notice, I'm going to upload three documents. One, two, three, the micro entity status, the cover sheet, and my specification. They do not want any separations in your file. So you can't have one SB15A with a file, with a uh, space, sorry. The machine will kick it out on their end. So you can't do that. Okay? Have everything joined together. It's like one giant run-on sentence. So the next thing I'm going to do is the cover sheet. Notice how there's no separations. You can have an underscore if you want, but don't have any physical separations. You hit open. There's my file. Entity status correspondence. We're not going to have that. This is going to be application part because this is part of the application. So now the information in this box is going to change. See, it says provisional cover sheet SB16. And then we hit add a file. And now Everything is fine. If it wasn't, you're going to get this error message and it takes you to this page. Files to be submitted naming conventions. They love their fancy terminology and their nomenclature. It's very Machiavellian. All as they will accept is a PDF, a text, a document, or a zip. But really, if I was you, I would stick with the PDF or a text file, meaning a Word file or whatever you have with an Apple computer. Um, here's the key. You can start out with A through Z with the capital or A through Z small or zero through nine. Do not use breaks, commas, or symbols. You can use underscore or a hyphen with the file name, but here is the key. No spaces. If you put in spaces, your file is going to get kicked out. So now we're going to check one more file. And we're going to hit the specification. This is the body of your provisional patent application. So let's go through this real quick. If you make under 202 grand, you're going to fill out this form. 
you must use this cover sheet for every application. There's no getting around it. And then you have to have your specification, however you write it. The only thing I want to tell you is there are three entities for payment. And with the PTO, payment is premier. There is a micro. Like I said, it's 75. There is a small entity and there are no forms for a small entity. It's you just plug it in. And there's a large entity, and those are the major corporations. So let's upload the specification. So we come here, and again, it goes to application part because that's what I did up here. And so it goes on an assumption that the next part you're going to put in here is what you had above. So entity status would have showed up here but I changed it to application part. See, it's application part. And the specification is part of your application. So you come over here. And we want specification. Don't pay attention to any of these other things other than the black and white drawings which you can submit or drawings other than black and white line drawings if you're going to submit that. Now you should submit some drawings. I'm not going to do this in this tutorial, but I'm just telling you and I'm going to go over that in a future video. So we're going to hit specification and we're going to add file. Now let's make sure our files are complete. And this is where it's going to get tricky and this is where you're going to think you made a mistake and you didn't. Now watch. It says, please upload and validate before review. Now we could have done each one of these files, upload and validate singularly, but I'm doing all three at once. It's just as well that you do it. And then you can go back if you have a problem and delete the file. Now watch. It's uploading my files. And it's instantaneous. So the micro entity had no problem. I got a blue diamond. My cover sheet redacted, and this is redacted too, has, has a problem, a slight problem. It's a warning. It's a yellow triangle. And the correspondence specification, even though it's redacted, it gets a blue diamond. There's no rhyme or reason. The only way that your file should be removed and replaced is if you get a red triangle that's pointing down. If you get a yellow triangle such as this, the file is still good. Depending on who you speak with in the electronics business unit, they will tell you that they've been trying to get rid of this yellow triangle for years by their IT department and they've been unsuccessful. What they will also tell you is this is a nuisance. Disregard it. Your file is form and it will upload and you'll be able to file your provisional patent application or your non-provisional if this comes up or a trademark. Disregard it. This gets handled internally by the PTO. Okay, so if you get this and you're upset about it and you might get it because I always get it and you end up calling the Patent Electronic Center and I'm going to give you the number 866-217-9100. They are tremendous. They're helpful, but you're just going to be chasing your tail. So please ignore that. So now the files have been uploaded. Notice the micro entity file is one page. The cover sheet is two pages and my specification was 18. Let me show you what it looks like. 
So you can go there and look at your file as it's uploaded. In the following video, I'm going to show you what these files are and these forms are and how to fill them out. I'm not going to do it now. The video will get too long. But I'm just giving you a quick runaround on what the specification looks like, the micro entity, and the cover sheet. So now we're all done. We're ready to go. I'm going to hit continue. It automatically goes to the largest amount, but you're not going to pay that. Major corporations do. Small entities pay half. So watch, we'll hit small entity and that changes to 150. I told you it was 150. It's double of what a micro is. Anybody above $202,563 going to pay this. But you're going to click this if you're a micro. And there you go. It's $75. You fill out this page and you hit continue. So let me put in the, the amount. Now it'll go through. I forgot to click that. My bad, and I'm sorry I took all your time. Let's see if it'll take a number here. There it goes. It's just as well you watch my mistakes so you learn from it. So it took my $75 because I clicked that and I didn't. And like I said, I clicked the micro entity. You can click the small entity or the large entity, but you're definitely not going to ever be large and you might make to over 200 grand a year. I don't know. So now we hit continue and it's ready to go. Now you hit submit and then it will take you to their payment portal and you'll whip out a credit card and you'll put down $75 and then it will show you that they received your submission and your payment. Now, I could hit submit and not pay, and I won't have a provisional patent application. You do not have anything whatsoever, ever, with the USPTO or any of the government agencies, whether it's a copyright, a patent, a trademark, unless you pay. So if I submitted this, my application would be in there, but since I didn't pay, it would automatically be abandoned. But so you would hit the submit and the rest is self-explanatory. So I got you there. And in the next video, we're going to be going over the three things that you must file to get a provisional, which is how you're going to pay. So your SB um, 15, because I'm assuming most you make under 200 grand. This has to be there. That's the cover sheet. That's two pages. Then I'll show you what your specification is going to look like. We'll look at those documents and then we'll follow it up with another video. Okay. So there we go. You have a great day. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.